So the next talk is by Aya. So let me let me first thank the organizers for inviting me here and for giving me the opportunity to, to give a talk about some, some fairly recent work, which is which is a bit related to the, to the themes of this this workshop. So uh, let me start up by by saying that I'm a I'm a novice in the in this uh, in, uh, in this in this business about free free spectrohedra. So I'm looking forward to, to hearing your comments about things that we're not doing correctly or where that can be input. So or maybe I will ask you some questions after at the end of my talk. <laughs> okay, good. So 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 what is my goal? My goal is to, to tell you about this um, this connection we discovered between uh, between a problem in quantum information theory and and uh, and the inclusion problem for um, for free spectrohedra in some in some in some particular case. So the problem in, in, in quantum information theory that uh, uh, that uh, we, we look at is, is, is the question of compatibility of quantum measurements. So um, um, measurements, and by, that, by that I mean UVMs. And uh, this is this the the relation here. Uh, this is this is going to be related to uh, to, uh, to a free spectrum which which is called. The matrix diamond. Um, and let me let me just say right now that this is um, since since you have you have uh, you have heard about the matrix cube in the last talk. The matrix cube is the is the is now the largest matrix complex that you can put uh, on the an infinity ball. And the matrix diamond is the same thing, but you construct it on top of the on top of the L one ball. So it's, it's a kind of the the one version of the matrix cube. Um, so this is one uh, one of these equivalences that I want to, to tell you about. And the other one that is maybe more interesting is that there is a notion here uh, of noise robustness. And that's, again, uh, equivalent to the, the question of the inclusion constants for this, for this for this matrix. So I will uh, so basically the talk will be will have three three parts. The first one I will tell you about these things here. In the second one I will introduce the matrix diamond and I will tell you some some, some things which were known in the literature of uh, of um, of its convexity on, on, on this side. And then in the third part I will I will I will state the theorem that that relates these uh, these objects and also, I will discuss some how the um, the transfer of results from one side to the other, and which techniques from here are what 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 the results on this side mean here, and, and vice versa. What techniques from quantum information one can use to uh, to say new things about the uh, uh, about these uh, these these three structures. Okay, so so one uh, let me tell you about UVMs and this notion of compatibility. Please uh, ask questions at the time and, and tell me if my handwriting is big enough or readable. Okay, so what is uh, so remember remember that quantum states are uh, these positive semi-definite matrices of size D. Everything will be complex in my in my talk, and we ask them to be positive semi-definite and of trace one. And and one one would like to measure this is this quantum state. So the idea is that you have this this quantum particle, which goes into some some measurement apparatus, and here you get a reading on this on this measurement apparatus, and you know quantum mechanics tells you that the result of a of a quantum measurement is a random variable. So this will give you some outcome i, which the number from one to k. So k is the number, is the number of outcomes of this measurement apparatus, and you will get outcome i with probability. Okay. So so here we want k are positive numbers and the sum of And again, the axiom of the axioms of quantum mechanics tell you that these these probabilities should be linear uh, in the value of so in the in the state row, and they should be positive as small to one. So, so basically, this is the definition of a P of the end. 
if so it's a three couple of operators which are positive. This this will tell you that these probabilities are positive and they sum up together. This corresponds to this normalization. And the probabilities to get the probabilities by saying that pi is just a choice of rule times. <clears throat> okay, so P again is just a couple of uh, just a key couple of, of operators. And <clears throat> now uh, let me so I will I will I will talk about this matrix element. So this this corresponds to the case where k equals two. So this is, these are somehow if you if you like yes no measurements. So I just have two outcomes, yes or no. And let me give you some examples. So maybe something like this. I can measure in the canonical basis. Or I can measure in the different basis. Here the, the operators have right one. Or I can do these, uh, let's say, one third, I think two and two thirds. These are these are few ends. and uh, and the question now let me tell you what what is compatibility. So the idea of compatibility is the following: Imagine that I have two such PLBMs, which correspond to two measurement uh, devices, and I would like to I would like to measure I would like to I would like to measure both quantities on the state row. But since I have just one particle row, I cannot do this uh, in general. So what I would like to do, let me write down the definition. So two PLBNs are compatible if there exists some other PLBN, which is called the joint PLBN, with the property that I can obtain the probabilities of measuring A and the probabilities of measuring B as classical post-processing post-processing of the probability of measuring C. Right? So in practice, what I would do, I would measure C, and then I would do some some uh, I, would, I would use my classical computer to, to process these, these probabilities to get probabilities for A and for B. So Can you obtain as classical post processes of, let's say, uh, Rx uh, by classical post processes? I mean, multiplying this vector Rx with stochastic matrices to get the vectors P. Now this is this seems a bit uh, a bit confusing. So let me tell you how you use this in practice. In fact, one can choose C. One can always, if they are compatible, one can always choose the C indexed by IJ, where I can always get this AI as Marginals and the BJs as a So if they are compatible, I can always uh, I can always pick such a joint QPM. And actually, this is the this is the formulation I will use I will use for now. So the question is, you give me A and B, and the question is, can I find a P of C such that A and B are the marginals uh, of this of this? Let me let me show you three, three examples. So, first example. Uh, let's assume that uh, the POVM A, the the elements in the POVM are just uh, scalars. This, 
this kind of equivalence is a kind of trivial because what it means is that you see, it means that the probabilities I get are independent of the of the of the of the input of the, of the state I put into my measurement apparatus. So this is kind of has the, the trivial case, and you see, it's, it's, it's actually easy to build such a C. I will just put C I J to be A I B J times A J. So basically, I'm doing I'm looking at these probability vectors, and I'm, I'm doing their their I mean, I just, these, these two probability distribution class of probability distributions, and I'm taking their uh, their tensor form. Right? Okay. So, so these things are equivalent. So this is a positive matrix. It has the right marginals. So, so these two, uh, these two A and B are compatible. Okay. Now, let me let me let me show you that these two POVMs are not compatible. So, uh, let me call this then uh, F and G. So let's let's look for such a for such a joint POVM. Let me call the elements x11, x12, x21, x2. And let me arrange them in a, in a matrix. So what are my requirements? My requirements are that the, the row sums should be these two matrices. So this should be 1, 0, 0, 0. This should be 0, 0, 0, 1. And the column sums should be the effects of this operation. So 1 half, <coughs> 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, half, 1, minus 1, minus 1. So when I do row column sums. So you see this this will not work because since since this is rank one and these are both positive operators, they should be multiple of this rank one projection. And the same thing here, right? This should also be a multiple of this rank one projection. So since these are two different rank one projections, the only the only possibility is that x11 equals zero. And actually the same is true for any elements. So then they cannot sum up to one. Because this should be a few of is this, is this clear? So basically I'm saying that if if the two POVMs A and B have two rank one operators inside, rank one effects, they can be Compatible if and only if they are the same as after permutation. Right. Now, let me maybe give you a third, third example is that if if the elements of if the effects, the elements of these POVMs commute, then A and B are compatible. Because I can just take this joint POVM to be basically a product, right? And you see, since, since they commute, this is a positive semi-definite. If they, if they didn't commute, of course, I can, I can I mean, this object always has the right modules. So if I sum over j, I always get the i. If I sum over i, I always get the j. But in general, if these matrices do not commute, they are not, they, this, this uh, aibj will not be positive semi-definite. But if they commute, everything works with this. Okay, so now the uh, the next important point is that P of Ms can be made compatible by adding noise. What do I mean by that? Is that, for instance, if I start with a POVM, let's call it E identity minus E. And I add noise to it. 
what I mean by this is that I take a convex combination between this two here and a trivial one. So I get equal to then the claim is that for for small enough for small enough S uh, these things will become compact, the computer games will become compact. And this, this leads to the following definition. I call it compatibility region. It's the following set. So it has two parameters, G and D. You will recognize the GND from, from Scott's talk. They are the same, will be the same objects. Uh, this is the same, they will, they will correspond to the same thing. So this is of G tuples of numbers 0 to 1. With that, for all uh, effects. By this, I mean that this thing corresponds to the people here EI and identity minus EI. Okay? I'll be focusing on, on POVMs with two up. So, since I want both these, both these guys to be positive, I have to ask that EI is between 0 and 1. So, I want that for any, any choice of, two outcome, of G to outcome POVMs, uh, if I do this complex combination, This convex weight S i is our compact. So this set is the it tells me how much noise do I have to add to make any G tuple of quantum effects compatible. Yes. Is it obvious? Like uh, the answer is not like add all the noise. I mean like oh like, yes. So actually you can I will, I, will, I, will, I, will, I will show some results, but, um, you know, by, since, uh, since these trivial POVMs are compatible with anything, I can always do, let me, let me write it down. <coughs> so, you know, a POVM I and identity minus E and identity minus E, and identity over 2, identity over 2, and these are compatible because they commute. Yeah. And identity over 2 and f, identity minus f, are compatible. You can easily see that the set of compatible things is convex, so I can always take one half, one half of this. Set. So it's easy to see that. So facts about this gamma G D. So again, G is the number of POVMs I have, and D is the dimension, dimension of the operators. So I always have this uh, zero zero one equation I here. This belongs to why is that? This means that basically what, what I will do in practice, I will measure, I will use my, my row, I will measure the, the, the i-th POVM on row, and for the other ones I will just flip a point, because I, I, I can always do this. Uh, of course this is complex, this is also easy to see. And 
And um, let me show you what happens for g equals 2. So, for 2 pure yes. So, this gamma 2g is the following set. So, this is with S1, this is S2. So, I know that uh, 1, 0, and 0, 1 are inside my set, so I have all this. Side, my complexity. And one thing I know is that 1, 1 is not in the set. Because there are there are POVNs which are not open. So the question is, is this larger or is this exactly this um, this triangle? And yeah, the, the, and it is larger, and actually in this case it's it's the bottom. So this is a uh, This is, the, this is the true set. Otherwise, it's not going to be more. So, so this is what happens for two pure things. This I will, I, will, uh, I will show this result uh, later how it follows from our work, but this has been known for, for a long time. So, uh, there are points here which, uh, which are outside the stack. This is the main, uh, this is the main. Now, if there are no questions, I will move. Oh, yeah. There is a question. Why is the curve S1, why is this R relevant? So you said the region is underneath the line? Oh, no. So the region is everything. Oh. So this kind of this triangle is trivial. Oh, I see. My convexity by the fact that. But I, I have more. That's, that's the thing. I have more than this. Are you going to show us how to prove this inequality? Yes. Yes. I mean, this. This has been known in the information for, for, for quite some time, for, mm. for maybe over 10 years. But this also follows from, from this, from this uh, bijection with, with inclusion of free selection. Okay. 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 Is determined by some uh, some G table of matrices. So this would be this would be D by D matrices, self adjoint. I will take G of them. Then at this level N of the three spectral children is the set of uh, sorry, is a set of G tables of N by N matrices. Satisfy this this inequality. So inequality. And the free object is just the union of these things. Uh, the free spectral union is just the union of all these. This is a free spectral figure, and we'll be interested in in one particular. Such object, which is the matrix diagram. So I will denote this by D, what should be a diamond sign here. There is a G, and at level N. And this is a set of G tables of matrices. So joint, there's G of them. And uh, this is defined by by the by uh, defined by, by inequalities. So the inequalities are like this, sum of epsilon i x i.
So this is uh, uh, this is the, the definition of this object. You see, at, at level one, um, this is the level one. I'm asking that. Uh, This is the most this is the most stringent you call it is So at at level one, the, the, the exercise are, are numbers, and what I'm asking here is that all the all the sign choices here give me something smaller than one. And this is the uh, this is the L1 ball. And you see I haven't uh, I haven't given you actually this 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 the way of writing this here is not the same as as that one. But you can, you can easily see that, for instance, uh, uh, for instance at, at level two, this is defined by by diagonal matrices. So whenever I start with something which is a which is a, a polytope, I can always use diagonal matrices to define it in, in such a way. And here, my two matrices will be uh, just have to pick them in the right order. So one one. Okay, so this defines this defines the same object, but in this in this definition. Okay. And as as for the matrix cube, this is the the largest the largest uh, matrix complex set I can put on top of this of this one. Define the inclusion constant. Let me let me remind you the theorem that was mentioned by Scott and Igor, Igor earlier uh, and, and yesterday, which is which is actually key in the in our in our result. Is this this question of inclusion of <coughs> of uh, of spectral hydra and, and, and this this this, this inclusion of spectral hydra problem is is directly related to the to, to positivity of uh, of linear maps. So the theorem is like this. So I have again um, the G top of, of matrices, essentially B. I'll take them to have different sizes, capital B and small B. And I will assume that. The spectrohedron defined by A at level one is not. And then, if I look at, I can define a, a linear map from from the operator system defined by the identity and A one, A G to M. Small b, which is unit of, so you have the identity to the identity, and you have small the ais. Since I have this assumption, this is this is a well-defined uh, this is a well-defined linear map. Let's consider consider this linear map. And what this theorem says is that it's map phi. Is n positive if I don't if I have inclusion of the first again of the level n uh, of the first again defined by a into the one. Okay. So in particular, phi is completely positive if I don't if. I have inclusion at the at the free This is 
is something in that we, uh, we like a lot in quantum information theory because a lot of, 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 of quantum information, especially the, in particular the, uh, the separability problem that, that Aaron talked about is understanding somehow what's the difference between positivity and complete positivity. So this is a very, this, this theorem is a very powerful, powerful tool. And uh, <clears throat> so now let me move to, to this inclusion constant. So the first observation is that if I have inclusion at, at the free level, then of course I have inclusion at level one. And the question is how about the first? inclusion at level one, can I hope to have inclusion at the free level? This is, of course, not the case because this is asking much more. And the idea behind these inclusion constants is that if I have inclusion at level one, maybe by shrinking uh, this object here, I can have inclusion at, at, at the full level. And this is what the inclusion constants do. So, the definition, the inclusion constants. I'll define a set delta, again with two parameters, g and d. And this is the set of, g of vectors, g tuples, numbers between 0 and 1, such that if I look at the matrix diamond, so now I'm taking the, the particular case when this A object here is this guy, the matrix diamond. Remember, it's not stop key, kill the q, the case of diamond. So if I have inclusion at level one, oh, sorry. Okay, let me let me write let me write it down first. Then by shrinking this matrix diamond by S, I would have inclusion. And <coughs> I ask that this be true for any, any B here, but I will restrict the size of the matrix of gradient. So, I'll just look at T by the matrices. So I, I will look at just at, at spectrophilia defined by, by matrices of size T. And so uh, notice that we have these two parameters, so g is the number, is the, you know, the, this is the L1 volt of Rg. So it's the number of, of coordinates I have. D is this restriction that I put on, on the free spectral theta B that I want, to, I want to, to put my matrix down inside of. And also maybe a, a different, uh, a feature of, of this definition which was not present in this cost talk is that we allow the scaling to be different in, for, for different coordinates. So we don't ask that the S's are, so, so Scott asked that his, his row was the same in all <coughs> coordinates. I might, you know, I might want to scale my first coordinate by 0 0.5 and my second coordinate by 0 0.3. I have different scaling constants for, for, for different coordinates. Okay. Other than that, this is exactly Scott's point. So let me tell you two results about these delta sets. So facts about delta. So one, uh, I'll tell you two facts. The first one is that constant vector 1 over 2d inside the set. This is a this is this is a result uh, from from the from this matrix cube paper that Scott was referencing. Um, <coughs> And 
another, another very nice result. Is that I have this water circle. Have been, uh, they, have, they, have, they have really very nice proofs, completely different, uh, different proofs. So you see, one, one, one feature is that this is something which is gene dependent, <coughs> and this is something which is D independent. And this kind of, in these two papers, the authors look like kind of this setting, and here they are more interested in gene independent things, and here they are interested more in D independent things, but they care about both. Uh, because in this, uh, you, you'll, you'll see in a moment why, why do we care about both these things. And now, <coughs> finally, I will, if there are no questions, I will move to the third part of my talk, which is uh, our results, so how, how these two problems are connected. G two of n, so e one identity minus e one, e two identity minus e two, okay. identity minus e g. I don't want to assume this. Sorry, so these are just kind of separate your matrices. Then we have several statements. So the first one is that the matrix time at level one. Included in the spectrohedron defined by the matrices 2e minus the identity. So, you know, the first one, b1 is 2e1 minus identity, and bg is 2e minus identity. I'm using this uh, shortcut to try to get this. So, we have inclusion at level 1, if I don't give. Uh, these are the objects. Have inclusion at, 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 at the free level. If these things are compatible, so. and then third claim. So you see. For them to be compatible, they have to be P of N, so this implies this. And now, the third thing is what happens at these intermediate levels. So for uh, for these intermediate levels, we have inclusion at this level N. If and only if. Um, for all isometries, so whenever I shrink my operators e i by this d, they become compact.
then the fourth thing, such a over, this is a it's noise robust constant. These noise, noise constants that we introduce in the first part are precisely the ones, the inclusion constants for this for this type. So, let me uh, basically this, let me let me tell you let me comment a bit on this theorem. So basically, it says that the two problems are completely equivalent at all levels. So, level one, this is the easy thing I have just that these these things are uh, positive operators. So this is uh, this is trivial. The, maybe the the interesting, the most interesting result is this too that I have inclusion at full level if uh, it's equivalent to compatibility. And moreover, these inclusion constants, which are the objects that one is interested in, are precisely uh, this, this noise robustness, uh, this, this minimal quantity of noise that I have to add to that any, any G double of uh, two outcome here of size D become compatible. These are precisely this, this. This dictionary between the two problems is, is, is very, goes to most of the interesting. Uh, so, <clears throat> maybe before, 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 I think I would like to tell you one more thing. So, I, I, I told you that for, for G equals 2, we have this, this water circle picture. Let me, let me draw you the, the phase diagram of this problem. So, what is known about these, these, these sets? Uh, and now, so we have. Uh, let me see which way. So we have G and B. So there are. So basically, what we know is that here is gamma, is delta. Here we have equality in this region. So these inclusion components are precisely the quarter circle. This curve is uh, D is two. The, basically, two to the g minus one to the g. There is another region where we know that. So this is a d equals square root of g over two. Here we know that the quarter circle. So we know that the quarter circle is always a subset of these inclusion constants by the by the Pasa and R result. So here we know that the quarter circle is a strict subset. Of, of, the, of this inclusion. Yeah. Here we don't know about the thing. Basically, this, uh, this bound is this bound comes from this, uh, this result of uh, this result here that says that this one over two d is inside, and uh, you know, for this for this range we know that this cannot be the case. This cannot be the quarter circle because this one over two d point is outside. Circles, so we have more. Um, so, so basically, this is to say that we have no idea what's happening, uh, what's happening in this uh, in this region. So, what are the inclusion constants for this uh, for this range of parameters where d is not its own change? This is, uh, this is one. Uh, and uh, maybe I should also say that here I, o I only talked about this. Matrix diamond, which corresponds to these P of Vms with two outcomes. Exactly the same theorem, so we can, we can copy paste it works if we allow P of Vms with more than two outcomes. Uh, but then you have to replace this matrix diamond by, by a different object, which is the matrix jewel, which again you can you can it's a it's it's the largest, you know, it's something built on top of a polytope that we we describe in our in our paper. The problem is that in that case, actually, the situation is, is much worse than this one because this matrix dual has has less symmetry. So here, for instance, for this result, you need some symmetry. This also doesn't work. So basically, in this case, for the um, for the uh, for this matrix dual, so we try to compute the inclusion constants for this new for this new free state uh, Much less is known because we don't have all this machinery coming from a, from free state perihedral theory. So all, most of the results we have for the for the matrix dual. Uh, either come from symmetrizing the jewel and trying to use these old results and connecting it to connecting it to the diamond via uh, some uh, some tricks in quantum information theory, or and maybe this is something which is interesting for for people.
well, not important information that so in, 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 in QIT we have this technique to, to render to render things compatible using uh, using something just called quantum cloning. So as you might have heard, it's, it's impossible to clone information in, in quantum theory, but you can do something which is called quantum approximate cloning, where you ask that you know you have a quantum state and you make copies of it, but you don't require that the copies are perfect. So you know, might, might allow some noise for each uh, for, for, for the copies. And somehow, how good you can do, how, 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 what's, the, what's the overall quality of these, of these copies has been, uh, has been computed in, in, in QID. And these, these, these numbers, which give you what the, the, the best possible copies you can have, are related to these, uh, to these inclusion constants for, the, uh, for, this, for this matrix jewel. So for, for, for the jewel, for instance, we have more, more, we use more techniques from quantum information to say something about these inclusion constants, whereas for the diamond, which has been studied a lot in uh, uh, it is such great complexity. It's the other way around. We use we use these two results, which are very powerful, to to say something about about objects in, in quantum information. So it's kind of fun. Uh, depending on how how uh, how complicated the object is, it's one theory or the other, which uh, which has been uh, more developed. Uh, and I would like to stop now, I guess, for some more time. Where does the curve d equals to g, where does that curve come from? Does it follow immediately from your theorem? <coughs> no, so this comes from something which is also in this past Shalit Soler paper, is that um, from, 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 from some parts of this paper we can extract actually the, uh, these, these uh, POVMs which are the most incompatible. So these are the ones for which I need to add the most noise. And these come from these, um, so, from, from the fact that what one needs to build those is, is you need k, these are, unit, these are self adjoint unitary operators which anti communicate. And these things exist if and only if the dimension is larger than. So this is, if you want, this is the only case where we know what these, you know, what the worst, the less, the, the least compatible uh, quantum effects can, and, and these are given by these these objects. Yeah. So your theorem doesn't impinge on drawing this phase diagram at all. I'm sorry. Your theorem doesn't help you fill in the phase diagram. My theorem. So <clears throat> what my what, what my uh, no no what my what, what what the theorem does is, uh, you know, I mean, it depends more. I mean, if you just care about this uh, this. Uh, I mean, you know, different parts of this of this phase diagram come from from some come from uh, uh, from algebraic complexity, some come from quantum information, depending on the case. Uh, but this one, the one which is on the blackboard, everything comes from from these papers. Basically. For for instance, this, this this quantum cloning business in, the, in that case gives you worse counts than. than Questions? Okay, let's thank Anne.